What's going on guys? Welcome back to Bad Pronunciation Motorsport. Uh, welcome to my living room and kitchen. Uh, I've kicked my girlfriend out this time since she so rudely kept coughing and interrupting my uh, Motorsport Manager online review. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out. I'll leave a card this side. This is where it is. Up here somewhere. <laughs> yes, welcome back to episode four of my Alpha Towery manager career on the F1 2020 season on Motorsport Manager 3. I can't believe I was pronouncing that so wrong this whole time, but hey, F1 pre-season testing sorted that one out. So I went away and I did quite a bit off camera. I went through the Invitational series, so I did like the biggest tournament where you do like three races because that got me the most money. But before we got into that, we got a little bit of bad news, so Carlos Sainz, on his way from McLaren to us in Italy, managed to get kidnapped by the Mafia. Uh, they wanted a lot of money. As much as I didn't want to, uh, I, I had to use my influence because really at the time, we just didn't have the money to pay that and also, you know, we didn't really negotiate with criminals, that's not our thing. But yeah, then we took on the Invitational Tournament and we won. So we managed to put $11 million in the bank. And then we signed a brand new sponsor with Hypertech, bringing us in 500 grand and putting 600,000 more into the pot per race. Um, which kind of immediately shows the impact that Carlos Sainz has had because his sponsor appeal is much, much higher than Kvyat's was. So... Huge spoiler there, if you didn't see the last episode, it's probably going to be in the title though. We've got Carlos Sainz, Daniel Kvyat has gone to McLaren, that happened right at the end of last episode. And, you know, he's already bringing in more money. Well, I say that, he's costing us a fortune. But through sponsors, hopefully he's going to bring in a lot more money. And hopefully we can turn around our, you know, finances. At the moment we're back down to losing just over a million a race, especially if we hit our sponsor targets but we've managed to get ourselves up to 17 million pounds in the bank. So we're quite comfortable. We can build quite well from here. But I didn't want to spend any more money before the race. We've got a lot of money in the bank, so we're ready for the Monaco Grand Prix. <laughs> now, I'm really excited about this one personally because obviously it's Science's first race with us uh, back in the team he used to race for, just under a different brand. But also, it is Daniel Kvyat's first race with McLaren. So, I could not tell you how this is going to go. I'm extremely excited to see. So yeah, we've also gone through and given Carlos Sainz all of the best car parts because contractually he is now the number one driver. He's also half a star better than Pierre at the moment. So we've gone through, we've given him all the best parts. So yeah, we've put a lot of pressure on him to turn this one around really. Cracking in to the Monaco Grand Prix, uh, we are going to go with Golden Tiger Bank again, 15th and above, because even though we still have that good front wing, which is no longer Pierre Gasly's and is now Carlos Sainz's, uh, and that is a crucial part around Monaco, I still don't think we really have the performance there. So I'm hoping for 15th and above. I'm hoping that that does the job. Okay, Monaco. The big one. I still can't believe Alex Albon is is at the top of the championship. Like, if this happens in real life, I'll be incredibly shocked. I'll be happy because it will be something different and it will be exciting. But I just can't see it happening. Okay, down for qualifying. So let's go straight in with some big numbers. That's not really what we wanted. <laughs> Okay, okay. That's a decent start for Pierre. Science doesn't have the best mechanic. I'm going to risk it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, they've both got about the same. Both got about two and a half tenths shaved off their time. Let's see where this gets us. Okay, so at the end of the first runs, obviously not everyone's put in a lap yet. But Science is 12th, which is okay. I'm quite happy with that. We could be doing a lot worse. 
And he's also very close to 100%, so we'll definitely get him another run out, and he will definitely get to that 100%. And I think Gasly will as well, if we carry on with that. That is, this is, this is going so, so well. <laughs> I might even risk it with the 9. I'm going to risk it with the 9. We didn't really need to, but he's already up to 100%. So, Monaco is already looking good for us here. Sainz is slower. That last sector let him down. We might get one more lap if we can get them back round. Um, even though Gasly can't improve at all. We are going to get to 100% with Sainz, which should boost his time by just over two tenths from what it already is. We don't need to change anything for Gasly. So one more run they're going to get. We might get up a little bit further up the grid. Maybe into the top ten. Sainz is up. He's up. Oh, and he's slow in the final sector again. I don't know what it is with him going around the last couple of corners. He just he just doesn't have the pace. But I will take 12th place. Um, it's not a bad starting position on the grid. I'm not going to read too much into it. Because obviously... Uh, at the last round we had really really good qualifying pace but we couldn't convert that into race pace whatsoever so I'm not going to read too much into that 12th place but it's a good start for him on his debut with us that is a, um, I will take that we put a little bit of money back into the bank thanks to Carlos oh poor old Kimi Raikkonen he's probably going to retire at the end of this year so here we have the starting grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. We've got a Mercedes lockout at the front of the grid with Valtteri Bottas, the championship leader on pole, looking for his first race win of the season here at Monaco. That would be huge for his championship challenge. Then we've got the Ferraris who aren't really doing that well this year, fourth and sixth in the championship, but third and fourth on the grid. That's strong qualifying from them. It's very processional. Then we've got the Red Bulls. Um, Max Verstappen having a really poor year down in fifth so far. He'll be looking to turn that around a little bit. Then Sergio Perez, pretty much where I'd expect him and Racing Point to be. Roman Grosjean's Haas. So it's just the Racing Points and the Haas. Ricardo Sainz on his debut in 12th, really strong qualifying. Then the McLarens, very poor effort from them. Kvyat, 14th in his first race with them. I think he'd have hoped to do better, but the fact that he's right there with Norris suggests that they're on a similar level, which is quite good. He's not, you know, really slow in that car. Then Giovinazzi outperforming Raikkonen. Gasly 16th, Ocon 17th, having a fairly poor season in that Renault. Raikkonen poor qualifying, and then the Williams right at the back of the grid, no surprises. So, we are gonna go all pit stop times one second faster and I think super soft tires 12% slower Carla but where 12% slower can I say 12% slower that would be horrendous why would I pick the tires just going 12% slower as a bonus wearing 12% slower that's the crucial part of that sentence that I forgot to read is that worth it I'm not sure that that's worth it because I'm not I'm not sure that I'm gonna use the super softs I might run them both on a one-stop stint of ultra softs no we're gonna boost the relationship with the mechanic I think that's more important at this stage the strategies are so hard to work out here I think because gazi has got the one second quicker pit stops I'm gonna run him on a two stop and try and do two hyper soft stints or at least or like two hyper softs and then an ultra soft or like you know what I mean? And I'm going to run Sainz on two ultra soft stints and try and one stop the race. Because I think they'll be quick enough to get him to the end. Yeah, we're going to go with that. So we're down to five red lights here for the Monaco Grand Prix. The Mercedes 1-2, Ferraris 3 and 4, Red Bull 5 and 6. How is this one going to go? Sainz is already falling back through the first corner, which is not all we want to see. He's fallen, oh, it's a bit all over the place. It's always a bit all over the place at Monaco. Weirdly, this game likes overtaking at Monaco, which is just something that's totally unrealistic, but it happens quite frequently here. Uh, I'm not that I'm complaining. Gasly, Sainz is going backwards. Gasly's going forwards with far worse car parts. 
which makes absolutely no sense. At the front, it's still very standard. Grosjean's gone forward. Perez has gone backwards. Grosjean's mixing it right up there, trying to overtake Max Verstappen. And he has overtaken Max Verstappen. So Grosjean is up into fifth place here in Monaco in a Haas. He is having a blinder of a season. So for all my slagging him off and lowering his stats, it's made no difference. He is still right up there. <laughs> So we are trying to take take Daniel Kvyat here for 11th place, which would be so sweet since we were slagging him off so much in the last episode. It would be so lovely to just get Gasly past him. Norris has dropped back. Kvyat is outperforming Norris in his first race in that McLaren, which is pretty impressive for... You know, considering Norris has had over a year in that car. So it's all kind of becoming a bit formation, as Monaco tends to do. We're going to stick Sainz in attacking mode because he's got a lot of fuel spare in that car. Gasly's tyres are lasting quite well as well. I, I wasn't expecting them to be still up around 50%. We were going to stop him in about two laps, but we might go eight laps. If these tyres can hold out quite well then we could probably just keep him on those hypersofts for the whole race, which he's looking quite quick on. Although, I hadn't noticed Kvyat is on the ultrasofts, which are essentially the medium compound tyre, and he is ahead of us. That's not ideal. Um, but the McLaren is a quicker car than us, so I'll allow it. We accidentally ran Carlos Sainz down into minuses of fuel there a little bit, but not the end of the world. He's still right on the tail of Gasly, and Gasly's on quicker a quicker tyre. We are actually going to pit Gasly this lap. We're going to put him onto another set of hypersofts. I think this is the one downfall as well. Our tyre wear is so bad. The leaders can do, you know, a whole extra lap or two than us on on certain compounds of tyres. Grosjean's tyres, he's on the same tyres as Gasly, and his are also wearing out, and that's why you know he's dropped behind Albon now, but. We, we do have a weak car in terms of how it handles, you know, fuel economy and tyre wear. So Gasly running around right at the back at the moment, which is not what we want. We need him to clear at least Latifi, really. He just seems to be getting stuck behind him at the moment, which is really not ideal because he's losing time. He's dropping back, and that's going to mean that that two-stop is just totally ineffective. I think if we can get Sainz round maybe another lap, we can one-stop. But if you see everyone else at the front, they're on the Hypersofts and they're going to one-stop. They've done 10 laps on the Hypersofts, so they are going to one-stop straight on to the Ultrasofts. And, you know, it's just going to be easy for them to breeze round ahead of us. I mean, we've got Carlos Sainz up to seventh place here, but he hasn't stopped. We are gonna have to stop him this lap, and his car, like the reliability of these parts, despite how good they are, is just not up to scratch. I can't risk fixing the parts in the stop. Um, I got a comment on the last video, you know, fixing the parts in the pit stop to make sure the car gets to the end, but if I do that, we are just gonna be so far back you know, we're going to lose so much time that it just makes it not worth it. Gasly has managed to clear Latifi, who hasn't stopped, and he's ahead of Magnussen, who I think has stopped. The fact that we're right behind Magnussen is actually pretty good here. Um, Gasly has held up Magnussen so well that now Sainz is right behind him, which I'm pretty sure Magnussen was in the top 10 before. So that is, that is promising for us. I think that's Stroll in the pits who we need to get out in front of, and we do. So Gasly, Gasly's doing a very good job of holding up Magnussen here, but equally he's now holding up Carlos Sainz. <laughs> when I said that there was a lot of overtaking at Monaco in this game, I take it back. The, the, it's, it's just turning into what Monaco is with, with trains and processions, especially for us. Uh, we, I think we need to work on our overtaking stats of our drivers a little bit because Sainz should have cleared Magnussen now. His tyres are so much fresher. I'm going to pit Gasly. I'm going to get him out of the way. 
he's going to be right at the back, but it has to be done. Who's that in the pits? That's one of the McLarens coming out. It's Kvyat. So Kvyat's ahead of Magnussen. So all of that holding up from Gasly hasn't really helped science that much. I'm trying to work out the strategies. I've kind of been focusing on our little battles here. But if I look throughout the field, there's still four cars that haven't stopped. Raikkonen's going to have to stop. He's on the hardest combat of tyres, so that's five. So Sainz will be up to 12th, theoretically, just about. He might even be ahead of Norris, because there's 13 seconds at the moment to Norris. So he might still be ahead of Norris. I don't think Gasly's going to be ahead of many of them, maybe two of them, maybe Giovinazzi and Russell, maybe Raikkonen, but other than that, I think he's still going to be quite far back, despite being on the quicker tyres, he's just not been overtaken, those tyres haven't helped him out, he's been getting stuck behind drivers, so I, I don't know, we are in a battle here with Stroll, which is not ideal, we're going to have to push Sainz to try and get him to make some overtakes. But I, I have a sneaky suspicion he's not going to make it to the end of this race. I think we did enough damage in the last race to that car. And this time it's just not going to make it. So I, I think after this race we need to take some of that money and focus on building parts. Giovinazzi still hasn't stopped. And I neither of the Alfa Romeos have stopped. And I can't see the logic here. Because they're gonna have to stop they can't make it to the end they both come in at once so they're gonna double stack so that's really gonna help out Gasly like Gasly's just gone up to 15th and Ocon behind him as well so if we can get science to the end here we are showing signs of improvement because 14th and 15th is again better than what we were last race and we'll be in our sponsor objective and that's Norris in the pits, so Sainz up to 13th. Kvyat in the top 10 is upsetting. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to see. I'm going to try and push Gasly up to Norris here. I really want to get Gasly. He's just not showing any pace. Everyone around him is on the same tyre but fresher. And Bottas has retired. Bottas, the championship leader, has had an engine failure. And Valtteri Bottas is out of this race. So what does that mean for the championship? And so has Gaz uh, Science even. Science Junior's retired. Gasly's car's on the rocks now, but he'll definitely make it to the end. But that puts Gasly up to P13. So I've been saying for a while we'd had no retirements, and now we've had two at Monaco, but both are failures. N they're not crashes. They're not going to bring out a safety car. They're just end-of-the-race failures. That puts Leclerc to the top of the the standings of the race, Hamilton in second, Vettel third, Perez up to sixth, so he's turned this race around really well, in terms of the championship, this will put Hamilton and Leclerc tied on points if it finishes like this, with Albon just behind, and suddenly Valtteri Bottas' championship lead is completely gone, they're on to the last lap of the race now, we are just holding off Esteban Ocon, this would be a good finish for Gasly here. I don't want to put him into attacking yet because he's he's not going to get lapped. So we will go around another lap. If we could just hope that somebody else retires. It's not going to pick us up points, but it's going to look a lot better for us to finish higher. And Ocon's tyres are so much stronger than ours as Leclerc comes around to win in Monaco. His home Grand Prix as well. I hadn't registered that. Leclerc has just won his home Grand Prix here in Monaco. Hamilton is second, Vettel third, so two Ferraris and a Mercedes on the podium. Ferrari turning around their season dramatically here. We're going to finish 14th with Gasly. I'm happy with that. He's met our target. We didn't actually give, we gave him the worst car possible for this race. And he's come home meeting our target. 14th exceeded. 125 grand. It's not a lot of money, but every little helps. So... Good old Pierre Gasly. So here we have the race results. Charles Leclerc winning his home Grand Prix in Monaco. Lewis Hamilton second. Vettel third. Albon outperforming Max Verstappen again in the Red Bull. And then Sergio Perez with, I think, Racing Point's best finish of the year so far. That's really going to 
help them out. It's not going to help us out because it moves them further away from us in the standings. Daniel Kvyat is 7th on his debut in a McLaren. Daniel Ricciardo 8th and then the Haas is 9th and 10th with Lando Norris just missing out. We did drop back towards the end of the race but Pierre was... Actually, I think Pierre's moved up from where he was in qualifying. I think he started 16th on the grid. So, I mean, he's only really moved up because two cars retired. So he's moved up those two places. But still, he's moved up. I'm not going to knock him. I am a lot happier with him this race than I was last race. In terms of the championship, what that does is, like I said during the race, puts Leclerc and Hamilton tied on points at the top. And Leclerc has now won two out of four races this year. So... He's leading the championship on count back. I expected Max Verstappen to be doing better than sixth at this point, to be quite honest. He really needs to pull his finger out. I didn't expect Alex Albon to be doing this good. I think maybe if you swap those two, that's almost my top six predictions for this year in real life. So the game, not far off. Then it obviously gets a little bit weird with Romain Grosjean in seventh. But Sergio Perez moving up to 10th place. In terms of the team's championship, we stay 8th. We stay in that non-scoring battle. Racing Point do move away from us. And yeah, like I said, right at the top, Ferrari, Red Bull and Mercedes now all split by 10 points. So that constructors battle is heating up. In fact, that's closer than anything else further down the grid, really. It, it's heating up nicely. <laughs> so I'm excited to see where this is going to go, to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah, George, George, I, th I think you're going to be waiting a while, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, maybe, maybe in 2021, especially maybe if you move teams, but I think that's, that's a big, big statement. So same as normal at the end of a race, we have some news on upgrades, Mercedes are bringing new brakes, Ferrari are bringing a new gearbox. McLaren are bringing a new engine, that's big, engine is probably one of the most important elements in this game in terms of how quick your car is. You can have a really good engine and if every other part is terrible you'll still do well, whereas if you have every part really good but a terrible engine you're still not going to be right up there. The engine is so so important. Yeah, a brand new engine for McLaren is big they might be further up the grid in the next round. Oh dear. That's... <laughs> Everything with Carlos Sainz so far is going wrong. Since he's moved to our team, he's been kidnapped by the Mafia, he's retired in his first Grand Prix, and now he's had a bad interview, which lowers his sponsor appeal. So one of the big reasons we brought him in was to get that sponsor appeal up so he gets some more money, and suddenly the sponsor appeal's dropped, and Daniel Kvyat's outperformed us, and... It... <sighs> So after getting to England on the supplier network, we've managed to unlock a new bonus in the big European hub. So we are going to be getting £100,000 per race, which is so unbelievably useful right now. So we're going to activate that straight away. And then I think we're going to head out to... Part of me wants to go... To Scotland just because it's only going to take one race and everywhere else I think is going to take longer. Yeah I'm going to head up to Scotland. Might seem a bit pointless but the more we collect at this point the more bonuses we can unlock as things go on. So we've got 16 million in the bank right now. I don't want to make the same mistakes that we made in the last few episodes where we just kind of spent our whole bank account because now we don't have the invitationals to fall back on when we need some money and in two races we're gonna have to start putting money in a pot for our next season's car so i really don't want to eat into that too much so i'm kind of torn between upgrading the headquarters and building some parts so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of do that off camera because it's probably going to take me a while to think through exactly what i want to do and I will update you on it at the start of the next episode, which will probably be after the Mobile Grand Prix. So at the start of the next episode as well, I will have the Renault livery, and then we will have our whole set of 2020 F1 cars sorted out. So for the next race in Vancouver, which is obviously the Canadian Grand Prix, we should have 
all the 2020 F1 cars in the game, unless I get too excited about this and record an episode sooner. I'll have upgraded some things behind the scenes. I'll either have built some new parts or upgraded the headquarters. Yeah, hopefully we can move forward in the next race. Someone um, obviously commented a while ago saying check the critical parts for the upcoming Grand Prix. So we might build a suspension for Vancouver and give it to science, maybe. But yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Thank you so much for watching. I know these episodes are quite long, I always intend to make them a little bit shorter, but the game just likes to just throw things at me when I least expect it, so hopefully they're entertaining for you to see. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.